The National High Magnetic Field Laboratory is home to dozens of powerful magnets. Each year, the world record instruments attract hundreds of scientists from as far off as Japan, Australia, and Europe. But the MagLab doesn't just conduct research with magnets, we also make magnets, both for our own lab and for other labs around the world. Yeah, there are about five high field resistive magnet labs in the world. We're the largest. And of these five largest labs, four of them now use our technology. And so our work is, is by far leading the world in terms of generating high fields. Our magnet designers and technicians are innovators. They create magnets that break new ground and set world records. They build all types of magnets, superconducting, pulsed, hybrid, and resistive magnets. Uh, the, the magnets here are the centerpiece, as I said, of the facility, and uh, we have to keep them running you know, every day, and when they wear out, we need to replace them very promptly. And because um, our users are coming from hundreds or thousands of miles away, and they're here for a few days, and if uh, there's a there's a problem and the user is unable to collect data, then they'll they'll leave without their data. The magnets are crafted in our resistive magnet shop by top-notch technicians whose friends don't quite understand what they do. No idea, and can't even conceptualize what I'm doing. And, and they think that that's the kind of magnet I make, is a big solid black magnet that you just stick on a fridge and not, not an actual coiled electromagnetic anything. <laughs> In fact, our magnets are nothing like the ones you put on your refrigerator. Those are permanent magnets made of alloys that have a weak but permanent magnetic field. Most of our magnets are resistive, or powered magnets, a type of electromagnet. As the name implies, electromagnets create magnetic fields using electricity. You can make a basic electromagnet right at home. In this example, a battery supplies the power. Okay, so this is a, a simple way of making an electromagnet. Uh, if you have a current carrying wire, which is just basically a conductor that has electrons moving through it, you produce a magnetic field around the wire. If I take that wire and make it into a loop like this, I increase the magnetic field because those magnetic fields now interact at the middle of the coil. And if I increase the number of turns in that coil, I also increase the magnetic field. Another way of multiplying the magnetic field would be to introduce an iron core into the center of that coil. So as you can see, once I have wrapped this iron bar with many turns, I can pick up paper clips with it because I have essentially made an electromagnet. That's the general idea behind our electromagnets, except ours are much larger and more powerful. They take a lot more time and money to build, not to mention patience and attention to detail. In fact, assembling a MagLab magnet requires an obsession with quality control. It all starts with the raw materials, sheets of copper or copper alloy. Each batch is tested in our materials characterization lab to make sure we've gotten our money's worth. The metal must be strong and conduct electricity well. And that's what we do. We quality control test it to see if it passes or it doesn't pass. And it typically runs from about fifty thousand dollars to you know a hundred thousand dollars worth of material so it's a lot of money and you got to make sure that it does pass the specifications material that passes muster is stamped into donut like circles called bitter plates or discs named for the scientist who invented them uh, these bitter discs are used to assemble the magnets they're the conductors in the electromagnets they have uh, hundreds of small cooling holes in them that uh, water is pumped through at high pressure and high velocity about 45 miles an hour that cold water is needed because the huge amount of electricity used generate intense heat if you were to somehow turn off the the water uh, instantaneously the magnet would actually melt in about a hundredth of a second but heat isn't the only foam magnets have to contend with. The other is pressure. Whenever you have a high current flowing in a magnetic field, the two interact to give very large forces. Uh, there's millions of pounds of force trying to pull these magnets apart. A great deal of science has gone into perfecting these plates, from what material to use, to the shape and placement of the holes, to how best to stack them. 
MagLab scientists and technicians are behind many innovations that paved the way for more efficient and powerful magnets. The technology that we use for our high field magnets uh, is what we call Florida Bitter Magnet Technology. It uses copper alloy sheet metal with heavily elongated cooling holes stamped into them. That technology was developed here. After these holes are stamped, the plates are painstakingly cleaned and deburred by machine and by hand to remove any bumps, because even a tiny imperfection could destroy the magnet. The discs are then silver plated to increase their conductivity. Then there's yet another round of quality control, or QC for short. And we run through a lot of QCing, right? So, so like when we get the discs that come back from the vendor, right, freshly stamped, you know, we run through a QC process there. We eliminate bad discs which were punched. And then as we're running them through the deburring machine, sometimes you'll find some that you missed from the first QCing. So they get eliminated. And then they go to the platers and they come back. So you can just look at the top 10 and look at them and say, yep, they did a good job. And then when you go to stack it, and then we go back and QC a second or a third time, you know, we actually look at all the holes and all the discs again. And believe it or not, even during that last go around, you can still pick up discs which are faulty and we don't use them. So yeah. they go through a lot of QC, yeah. <laughs> Finished bitter plates are stacked into coils in a very specific pattern that maximizes the current, which maximizes the magnetic field. In order to get a high field in the, in the bore of the magnet, the current has to be going around in a helix similar to a, a spiral staircase. Uh, and so we put insulators in there in pieces that, uh, that prevent the current from flowing straight through and require it to flow in the helical pattern. It takes many months to build a magnet. The job requires patience, an uncompromising work ethic, and extreme attention to detail. It's tedious, but if you realize that every single disc matters, then it just kind of goes by faster. <laughs> you have to make sure that all the little pieces you do go together, because your name's kind of on the magnet, so you don't want to you don't want to be the reason it burns up because you didn't see something or check it well enough. Hundreds of plates make up a coil, and three to five coils nested like Russian dolls make up a magnet. One coil can weigh more than 2,000 pounds, requiring a crane to move it into place. The finishing touch to a magnet is its maker's signature, often an offbeat nickname. When the magnet is turned on for the first time, the lab's reputation is on the line. That's when you cross your fingers and you go, boy, I hope we looked at all of them well enough. <laughs> As magnet builders finish one project, engineers are already busy planning and testing the next generation. What frequently happens is that anytime there's, there's a new facility available that you can do measurements that haven't been done before, uh, people discover new phenomena using them. And so there's always a great incentive to build a, a higher performance system than, than has existed previously. And, um, and so in the Magnet Science and Technology Division, where you're always trying to develop better ways of building magnets that will outperform the magnets that we've built in the past. Kind of makes you think about magnets in a whole new light. To find out more, come visit us in Tallahassee's Innovation Park or visit us online at www.magnet.fsu.edu.